Good morning friends, welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In the last few videos, I have discussed the strategies in handling deadlock. There are four strategies such as deadlock ignorance, deadlock prevention, deadlock avoidance, deadlock detection and recovery. We have four necessary conditions to occur a deadlock. The four necessary conditions are mutual exclusion, circular weight, hold and weight and then no preemption. If we can disable any one of the necessary condition, then deadlock will not happen. That task we will do it in the deadlock prevention. I hope you have watched the deadlock prevention also. Is it clear? In this video, I want to discuss about the deadlock avoidance with respect to the banker's algorithm. I request everyone to watch the complete video because this concept is very important for the students who are preparing for university exams and placements and also for the various competitive exams such as GATE, UGC NET. So I request everyone to watch the complete video. Now look at the terminologies. They have given process such as P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. And you have three types of resources such as R1, R2, R3. You have allocation matrix and max need matrix. What is the meaning of allocation matrix is zero instance of resource R1 has been allocated to the process P1. Similarly, one instance of resource R2 has been allocated to the process P1. Look at here. Two instance of resource R1, one instance of resource R2, one instance of resource R3 has been allocated to the process P4. Now coming to the max need. Max need represents that seven instance of resource R1, five instance of resource R2, three instance of resource R3 is required for the process P1 to complete its task. Similarly, five instance of resource R1, three instance of resource R2, three instance of resource R3 is required for the process P5 to complete its task. So this is the maximum requirement for the each process. Out of this requirement, few resources has been allocated. Now with this one, we can easily find the future need or requirement of each process with respect to the resource R1, resource R2, resource R3. Now you have three types of resources R1, R2, R3. 10 instance of resource R1, 5 instance of resource R2, 7 instance of resource R3 was available before allocating them to the process P1, process P2, so on up to process P5. So you have 10 instance of resource R1, out of that one, find it, out of that one, 2 instance of resource R1 has been allocated to P2, 3 instance has been allocated to process P3, 2 instance has been allocated to process P4. So, 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 2, 7. So, 7 instance has already allocated. Is it clear? So, the availability is 3 instance of resource R1. Is it clear? We are finding the availability. Is it clear? Similarly, 1 instance of resource R2, 1 instance of resource R2 has been allocated to the process P1 and process P4. So out of 5, 2 has already allocated, 3 are currently available. Look at the resource R3, 2, 1, 2. So totally 5 instance of resource R3 has been allocated to P3, P4, P5. So out of 7, 5 has been allocated. So the availability is 2. So this is your availability. Now we will find the future need or the requirement is it clear each textbook will follow its own terminology okay is it clear don't get confused but the point is same okay are you able to understand some people will represent it as future need some people will represent it as a requirement okay now you have resource r1 resource r2 resource r3 now how can you find the requirement the requirement can be find as max need minus allocation is it clear look at the resource r1 with respect to the process p1 the max need is 7 and the allocation was 0 so now what is the requirement it need totally 7 and till now you have not allocated resource r1 to the process p1 so it need another 7 instance of resource r1 to complete its task Similarly, look at the resource R2. 
5 is the max need and allocated is 1. So, 4 more instance of resource R2 is required to complete its task. Similarly, resource R3, 3 minus 0 is 3. So, 3 minus 2 is 1, 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2. Similarly, 9 minus 3 is 6, 0 minus 0 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, 5 minus 0 is 5, 3 minus 0 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. So we have found the future need or the requirement of each process with respect to the resource R1, resource R2, resource R3. Now we know the requirement of each process and we know the availability. With this availability, can we satisfy the requirement of any process? If we can satisfy requirement of any process, then we will allocate. If we cannot satisfy any process requirement, then we will say that system is in unsafe state. Is it clear? Because the four process are requesting something. If I does not have enough resource, how can I do it? Am I right or wrong? So we cannot satisfy the requirement of any process. So any process cannot complete its task. They all are going for the infinite waiting. So it goes to the deadlock. Is it clear? Now look at here. You have the availability 332. Look at the process P1 requirement 743. Can we satisfy the requirement? No. Because you can say that sir. You can satisfy the requirement of resource R2 and resource R3, but we cannot satisfy the requirement of resource R1 of process P1. So, we cannot satisfy its requirement. Are you able to understand? If we can satisfy the requirement of all the resource with respect to a particular process, then only we can allocate. Is it clear? It's not like, sir, the availability is 3 and 3 and 2. This is the availability. Is it clear? So you have three instances of resource R1, three instances of resource R2, two instances of resource R3. Now P1 is requesting for seven instances of resource R1. So we cannot satisfy because it is asking for seven, but we have three. How can we give? Is it clear? And it is asking for four instances of resource R2, but we have the three instances availability. We cannot satisfy. Similarly, it is asking for three instances of resource R3, we have only two. So, process P1 requirement is currently not satisfied. Is it clear? Now, we will check can we satisfy the requirement of process P2? 1, 2, 2. Yes. It is asking for one instance of resource R1. We have three. And the need is two. We, the availability is three. The need is two. The availability is three. So, we can satisfy the requirement of this is process P2. Okay. We can satisfy the requirement of process P2. Similarly, we will try to find can we satisfy the requirement of process P3, P4, P5 currently. Is it clear? Now look at the requirement of process P3. 600. The need is 6. The availability is 3. So we cannot satisfy the P3. Is it clear? Now look at the P4. P4 requirement is 211. Yes, the need is 2, the availability is 3, we can do. Need is 1, availability is 3, yes, we can do. Need is 1, availability is 2, okay. So, we can satisfy the requirement of process P4. Look at the process P5. The requirement is 5, 3, 1, but the need is, okay, need is 5, 3, 1 and the availability is 3, 3, 2. So, we cannot satisfy the requirement of process p5 with respect to the resource r1 is it clear process p5 resource r1 because the need is 5 but the availability is 3 only is it clear similarly we can satisfy the resource r2 and resource r3 but resource r1 we cannot do so we can say that currently with the availability of resources we cannot satisfy the requirement of process p5 so we can allocate the resource to p2 or P4. Is it clear? We can give to any one process. It is up to you whether it is P2 or P4. Let us me give to the process P2. Okay. So, the current availability is 3, 3, 2 and I want to give the resources to the process P2. What is its requirement? 1, 2, 2. 
so what will be my current availability to 1 0 this is my current availability and what is the allocation vector of the process p2 previously it has 2 0 0 this is the availability and we have allocated 1 2 2 so it is 3 2 2 and its requirement maximum need is also 3 2 2 so if it has three instances of resource R1, two instances of resource R2, two instances of resource R3, then only it will complete the task. We have allocated the 3 to 2. Is it clear? So process P2 will complete its task, then it will release the resources, whatever it is available. See, look at here. Any process will request for the resource and use the resource once it is completed the task it will release the resources also is it clear so it has currently 3 to 2 of resource r1 resource r2 resource r3 so if it releases the availability will be 5 3 2 is it clear are you able to understand so the availability currently is 5 3 2 and we have completed the process P2. Keep it here because finally we need to find the sequence. Is it clear? Okay. Now with this availability, can we satisfy the requirement of process P1? We cannot. Am I right? Because the need is 7, the availability is 5 only. Now P3, P3 also we cannot satisfy because the need is 6, but the availability is 5 only. Process P4, yes. Previously itself, we can satisfy the requirement of process P4 because the need is 2, availability is 5, need is 1, availability is 3, need is 1, availability is 2. So, we can do the process P4. Similarly, we will try to find the process P5. The need is 5, availability is 5, three is, uh, need is 3, availability is 3, need is 1, availability is 2. So, we can allocate the resources to process P4 and P5. Let me give it to the process P4. Are you able to understand it or not? Okay. Process P4. Let me do it for you. Okay. Now the current availability is 5, 3, 2. And we have allocated 2, 1, 1 to the process P4. Then the current availability is 3, Okay, 2, 1. This is my current availability. And coming to the process P4, already we have allocated two instances of resource R1, one instance of resource R2, one instance of resource R3. And now we are allocating 2, 1, 1. So, which is nothing but 4, 2, 2. This is the current allocation of process P4 and its max need is also 4, 2, 2. So, it got all the resources so it will complete its task and it, then it will release the resources so 422 it will release and the current availability is 321 so 743 so the now the current availability after completing the process p4 is 743 are you able to understand it or not is it clear now we will check can we allocate the resource to the process p1 then process p3 and then process p5 is it clear now look at here process p1 requirement is 7 and the availability is also 7 4 3 yes we can satisfy the requirement of process p1 similarly can we satisfy the requirement of process p3 yes the need is 6 and the availability is 7. The need is 0, the availability is 4. The need is 0, the availability is 3. So, even we can satisfy the requirement of process P3. Can we satisfy the requirement of process P5? The need is 5, availability is 7. The need is 3, availability is 4. The need is 1, the availability is 3. So, the availability is more with respect to all the resources as compared to the need. So, we can satisfy the requirement of process P5. So, we can satisfy all the process requirement. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? So, now let me allocate the resource to the process P1. Is it clear? Now, let me discuss the simple way of finding the new availability after allocating to the 
process P1. Currently you have 7, 4, 3 and then if you allocate it will become 0, 0, 0 and here it will become 7, 5, 3. Am I right? So you keep the old availability and find the allocation which is 0, 1, 0. Add to that one to get the new availability. It will be 7, 5, 3. Are you able to understand? You have something you are giving to this one and finally it is releasing everything. So to this one you just add the allocation vector to get the new availability. So after completing the process P1 the availability is 7, 5, 3. We need to execute process P1, P3 and P5. The P3 we can satisfy the requirement, P5 we can satisfy the requirement. Let me give to the process P3. Now the availability is 753. After allocating it will release the resources to get the new availability. Just add the old availability with the old allocation values. Then you will get the new availability as 10, 5, 5. With this one you can allocate the resource to the process P5. Is it clear? The old availability is 1055 and the availability means allocation is 002. Add that one to get the new availability which is 1057. Is it clear? After executing the all the process, we have the availability of 10 instance of resource R1, 5 instance of resource R2, 5 instance of resource R3. So I can say that the system is safe and the sequence is process P2, process P4, process P1, process P3, process P5. This is one of the sequence. Am I right? Because initially we find that we can do the process P4 or process P2. We have started with the process P2. However, if you would have started with the process P4, you will get another sequence. Is it clear? This is the one of the safe sequence is it clear i hope you have understood now let's take a situation okay i will tell let's take that my availability is 332 with this availability let's consider that we cannot satisfy the requirement of any process then we cannot allocate the resource to any process that stays we will call it as the system is in unsafe state then we will say that it is in deadlock I hope you have understood the banker's algorithm and how to solve this example. I will discuss few more examples and few gate questions also related to the banker's algorithm. If you still have any doubts related to this concept, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.